Now, ladies, let's get this party started. Name is Santa Claus. Excuse me. Santa Claus. <laughs> Coming in town. Santa! Oh my God! Santa here? I know him. For well, nothing, we're going to give him away free. Oh, oh, that's fantastic! How do you turn your face so red so fast? For free? Where's your Christmas spirit? That's better. does. You guys give up or you're thirsty for more? Yeah, did you get everything you wanted? Almost. <laughs> Almost, huh? Well, that's it. God save my little broken body. Missed. <laughs> Kids today. So desensitized by movies and television. Where's the Tylenol? Welcome on back, folks, to D&D Movie Time. It is getting very close to Christmas. We hope you have enjoyed uh, the last several reviews of tonight's review, as you can see on screen, is going to take Cora back. This is a movie that I don't know if she remembers if she's seen it or not, or if she's actually ever sat down and watched it before. It's called Christmas with the Cranks, Cora. What? You ever seen this? What? If you hear noise in the background, by the way, I have food cooking, so. Um, this is called Christmas with the Cranks. It is based off a short book by John Grisham, who made a lot of military books that were turned into movies so uh, definitely remember this movie if I ever tell you that this movie is uh, by John Grisham that uh, you'll know what movies you know him from what books he's written like daddy so anyways this is based off the book called skipping Christmas it's about a family that or a p couple parents send their daughter off to college and time passes and she decides she's going to come home for the holidays and that she's got a big surprise for them. So she's bringing her boyfriend. And so the parents, well, they basically decide that they have to change their plans last minute. This will have some familiar faces for you. Um, the biggest one is Santa Claus. Tim Allen plays the father in this movie, so you should definitely recognize him. You might also recognize the leading neighbor, Frohmeyer. Well, we'll talk about that after. So, have you ever seen this movie before? All right, so are you excited to watch this movie? Another Christmas movie with Tim Allen? Let's go! All right, we'll see you guys after the movie. Bye.
In this friendly little town, there lived an enchanting family named the Cranks. Every year, they would celebrate Christmas together. Merry Christmas! Until the year their daughter Blair left for the holidays. Won't be the same. Then, Luther got a brilliant idea. We skip Christmas. We'll go bask in the Caribbean sun. We skip Christmas? What's up? No Christmas Eve party? Run away from Christmas, huh? A lot of the neighbors are pretty upset. They do not get frosty. Nora, stop the car. Talk to me, Nora. Please. Hello? Mom? Dad? I changed my mind and I'm coming home for Christmas. What? Based on the best-selling novel, Skipping Christmas. We have only 12 hours, so we're going to perform a little Christmas miracle. I'm getting the ham. You get the treat. Tim Allen. Your face. It's like it's frozen. I got a Botox injection today. Luther? <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> Christmas with the Cranks. What are you doing, Luther? Whoa! Easy! Whoa! Merry Christmas, everybody. And I just wanted to add in real quickly here that book one of my epic fantasy series, The Guardian of Light, is going to be a free ebook this weekend. So if you're with your family and you're not the social kind of person, and you want something you can read on your phone or tablet while still spending time with your family and friends, definitely consider checking it out. My book series, The Guardian of Light. And I promise if you check it out, you might really enjoy it. If you are a fan of fantasy, this is definitely a series you will enjoy. So, and I mean, you cannot beat getting a free gift. And this is my gift to all the readers out there. And if you do enjoy it, maybe consider picking up the paperback in the future. Or if I get enough downloads and you guys ask me by leaving comments in this, you know, in this review. Or in my Christmas Eve review. I might be willing to even throw out books two and three as free ebooks after Christmas. So visit the link to Amazon down below and download your free ebook today. Now let's get back to the review. All right, so we just finished. Christmas with the Cranks. So, overall, did you like this movie, Cora? Um, at the end, it was Betris, but let's get to that later. Alright. Um, so, the Cranks spend over $6,000 every year on Christmas or more, and with their daughter, moving out and going down to South America for Greenpeace. The father decides this year they're going to not do Christmas and they're going to skip out and instead take a cruise. One of my biggest criticisms of this first off was if you're going to do that for Christmas why not do it like a couple days before so you can actually spend the Christmas holiday not traveling? I mean, I get they do mention that, oh, the flight is cheaper before or the flight is cheaper on the day of. 
But I think, like, most people aren't going to want to travel on, like, the 22nd or the 23rd. Especially for a cruise. So they should get the cruise line. Because it's going to be, like, most people are going to be home with their families. I still feel like the cruise tickets and stuff would have been dirt cheap. Even if the flight costs a little bit more, they would have saved quite a bit. Because no one's going to be really on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day on the cruise. And also, I think this movie lesson that it tried, tried to tell us is never skip Christmas. Yeah. What if you don't celebrate Christmas, though? Everyone in the world celebrates Christmas. Not everybody. There are people who celebrate different holidays, like Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah. And? And so not everybody celebrates Christmas. There's another thing. I don't know what the difference is, really, because I don't celebrate it, but some people celebrate a holiday called Kwanzaa. Can you sit down? I think Kwanzaa and Hanukkah, it's like Christmas. So Not exactly. Some parts are different. Some parts are the same as Christmas. Like, I bet Santa's going to still give me presents. Nope. I. They don't believe in Santa Claus, so Santa is not a part of their holiday. Like, okay, here's what I know about Hanukkah, okay? Only because I grew up with Jewish friends and I've known Jewish people that do celebrate Hanukkah. They light a candle one night for eight nights in a row until their thing called a menorah. That's the candle holder that holds the eight candles. Is all lit up. They do one a night. They light one candle a night. And then when they light the candle... They exchange a present with another family member. One present. So they only get eight presents. So you're saying of how many candles are lit up, that's how many presents? Yep. They don't get a ton from Santa. They don't give each other a bunch. Like, you know, I've got a couple under the tree for you. You've got a couple for me. And I bet on... On Christmas Day, Santa, Santa's gonna have some for you and me, and of course for Forty. Mm -hmm. But their cultures, their beliefs, do not believe in um, Santa Claus or you know the exchanging of presents like that. They do exchange presents on Hanukkah, but they only get eight. I now I don't know if like. They can accept gifts from other people, or if it's like a certain person. I don't know the details of that, but that is, you know, a difference of, a, you know, an opinion, and that's a difference of a holiday. So you can't sit there really and say that everybody celebrates Christmas because not everybody does. Some people don't believe in any religion and don't celebrate nothing. If they choose that, then that's up to them to believe. And Santa skips over all those people. He doesn't want to be mean and uh, intrude on anyone's beliefs. He doesn't want to cram the beliefs down the throat of the people. So if people don't believe, he just skips them. But, that, but back to the movie though. So... Did you have any favorite scenes? Um, the end was actually like, I had a favorite scene, but then after when I saw the end, I was like, forget about that, look at this. The snowman is alive, and it's in our cars like a sleigh. <laughs> what the people? Yeah, I think that was just a joke, though. I don't think that was actually like, meant to be serious it was just kind of like let's throw this out on a grand thing why not let's just make it a grand greeting card at the end what before that was your favorite scene though <coughs> um 
Um, Top three favorite parts of the movie. Go. You mean two since you already said okay. one? Okay, go. Um, so, I'm like, I like liked it when their daughter called and then when the mom just yeeted, ye yeeted her husband's idea out of the way and had it to and had it to be a Christmas again and had it the plan to celebrate it. Well, the son was, I mean, I'm. I mean, the husband was still kind of not in the mood, but at the very, but at the end, he was. Yeah. Th that was my favorite part. Okay. Any others? You had said you had another. I always said him. Like, what about when they were taking the tree, and he got arrested, or the carolers? When they're freaking out about the carolers and they're like crawling around the house. Like at a Christmas story Christmas. Kinda. What'd you think of the scene where uh Fro Meyer's got his hand on the window, she puts up the window and his hand hands get stuck in the car window. And then he falls and his gloved his gloves are still there looking like a pair of hands. <laughs> if, that was creepy. If someone made a whole movie version of this, I'm pretty sure that man could have died. Yeah. If she kept putting the window up. So, let me ask you this. When the kids were chanting, Free Frosty, Free Frosty, would you be chanting with them or be like, Shut up! <laughs> Not that frosty. That frosty is made out of ceramic. Do you know what ceramic is? I have no idea, but... It's kind of like clay and glass. Can it melt? Not really. I mean, anything can probably melt if you get it hot enough, maybe. I mean, metal can melt, so... Maybe ceramic can melt, but you'd have to get it super duper hot. Hotter than a regular furnace could probably get. I'm talking like five, six hundred degrees. Like an oven. That basement could be so hot. No, it wouldn't be that hot. Because then it would burn down the house. What about when he bought that Christmas tree? Let me finish what I was saying. That basement could be so hot that, yes, it could have not bought the house but in but in five days five days frosty could born okay. that that that's probably how hot the basement is not enough to burn the house down down but in five or four days frosty well, he was down there all year, so I think he was safe where he was. Anyways, what about when he bought that Christmas tree and there was like, it looked like crummy and then he got home and it, everything was off of it. All the new needles were gone. It was just twigs. Well, I'll probably do the same scene, but I'll like, take that tree when you got home and just yeet it as hard as I can. That guy, that was like the most expensive firewood he ever bought. Okay, sit down. Um, what about when she tried to get the honey baked ham? 
Did you that, that part is actually really yeah. dumb. That part is actually really dumb. Like you said, the hand was wiped out. She, she could have saved it. But no. Instead, she was just looking at it. And screaming. And screaming. And, and just keep looking at that truck of cold whatever. And then that vehicle just ran over that hand. She could have saved it. Yep. Especially since it was right there. In her reach. Yeah. I mean, she had to move back. Anyways, to avoid getting hit by the truck, might as well have snatched the thing in, in the process. So, um, what about at the beginning when uh, he has to go into the store? Did you like that scene? And, and it's raining. And the guy keeps asking, telling him, I really think you need an umbrella. Um, I actually really like when that guy just bought it, love his umbrella and just smacked that wall in the head. Yeah, but I'm asking him at the beginning, did you like that? No, we gotta finish this, come on. Kind of. Kind of. I think the funniest part of that scene is uh, when he keeps saying, no, I don't, no, I don't, and then it, like all that water just dumps right on top of him. And like, he's going. Yeah. Because I couldn't possibly get any water. <laughs> no, not now. <laughs> all right. Well, this is going to wrap up our review. I think, uh, is this one you're going to look forward to seeing every year, Cora? Um, or do you want to wait till we give our scores before you answer that? Kind of. All right. Well, we will see you guys after this quick break where we'll be back and we'll give our final scores. For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness, an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware! Will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right. So we are back, and you know what? We're gonna change things up tonight. We're gonna to start with Daddy's score. So for Christmas with the Cranks, 
on a scale of 1 to 10, I want to give this movie a 7. Is it perfect? No. There's a, like... Okay. I will agree with Nostalgia Critic and probably several other reviewers. There is one thing that is really dumb about this movie. And it's not like a major detail. I mean, first off... Okay, maybe two things. The first off is all the neighbors are certifiably insane. Uh, they will not leave the cranks alone. It's because they're not so... It's because they will not celebrate the holidays. Well, yeah, but, I mean, that these people have the right not to celebrate it. I mean, they should have been like, oh, their daughter decided to go away, to, you know, for this thing. Of course, you know, they're... They're feeling different, you know. They don't have their kid, you know. And so, yeah, understandably, they're not going to want... They're going to want to take some time off. They're, but the thing that does bother me is everybody keeps saying, oh, it's about the money. And then Tim Allen keeps saying, well, it's not about the money. When it is. Yeah, it's exactly the point. That was the exact point he made is that they were going to save money. Ultimately, yes. Is it not about the money? Kind of. But it primarily is driven behind the saving of the money. So I can completely understand why they want to save money. They don't have their daughter there. They don't need to waste time and money on celebrating Christmas when it's just going to be the two of them. And, I mean, the point of Christmas is family. Like, once Cora grows up, if I'm not married with more children, I'm probably not going to celebrate Christmas. Mm. Why? I'll either be going to your house, or I'll just have no reason to celebrate it. Well, I shall, when I grow up, and I'll Come to my house and, uh, and five or ten or twenty minutes. I'm strong. Come there and seriously love Indo until Christmas is over. <laughs> you're gonna live with me until Christmas is over. So basically, you're giving me a free pass on how to get you to move back in for a month. Alright, anyways, that's my score. 7 out of 10. Let's now move on to Cora. Cora, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rank Christmas with the Cranks? Um, probably a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10? Wow, you're lower than Daddy? Hey, it's just one number of wolves. Well, tell us why. What um, made it lower? This movie did have some problems. Yes, it killed the ham. Teeth. Like, again, I get it too. They don't want to spend no money on Christmas. Because, but Christmas it's for think. It's forgiven. It, it, it's, it's, it's for everyone. It's for nice. It's even for Santa. You gotta believe Santa for him to give you gifts. Yeah. Look, I, I even believe in Santa. That's why I got Lesser Rudolph here, and Rudolph is even wearing. That's Santa hat. <coughs> yeah. And also, and deep down in my heart, even in the outside, I even believe in Santa no matter what. Even as a grown up, I also believe in Santa. I 
I even help my kids put up the ominous on the Christmas tree? I was just celebrating Christmas, no matter what. If I'm by myself, or with other people. Yeah. Yes, I'm different than other people, but everyone's different. Even my dad's different. Even you guys are different. Yep, everybody celebrates a different way. Yep. So overall, did you like this? Is this a movie you that kept your interest and you're definitely looking forward to watching again next year? Kind of. Would you ever be interested in reading the book? Wait, this is a book for service? Yeah, I told you. It's called Skipping Christmas. We actually have it. Somewhere. Yeah, we actually we have it right here. called Skipping Christmas. <coughs> of course, if you are in the mood for a good Christmas book, you should definitely check out the best Christmas series ever, The Guardian of Light. Which is yours. Yep. So. Alright, but that is going to wrap up this video. We are so glad you guys could join us. Please be sure to join us Christmas Eve when we release our big double feature for Christmas, which will be the Home Alone 1 and 2 double feature <laughs> review. Cora is super excited for it. So we're glad you enjoyed this, and we'll see you all next time. Um, I have something to say real quick. What? I'm, I'm so one win F. They're going to make a Home Alone 3. They've made lots of Home Alone 3's. And they all sucked. But we'll talk about that with the next review. Let me watch Home Alone 3. We'll Let talk about that another time. So, see y'all later.